Welcome everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the central usage review and to do that we're going to start with the product groups. The product groups are divided up into five categories. Those five categories are going to be user, server, cloud, device, and device reporting. Each of the products inside of the user licensing contribute to that license band, that license tier. So your intercept X licensing, your fish threat campaigns, email, portal encryption, device encryption, and mobile all contribute to that tier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one of those licensing options and show you what counts towards usage. So if we go ahead and start, we're gonna take a look at the intercept X, XDR, MTR, and the device encryption. These all operate the same. It is a single agent on the endpoint. All of these are licensed per user. What that means is if we have one user with multiple devices, it is one license to cover that user. We determine an active user if they have a computer or device with a Sophos endpoint that has been active in the last 30 days. Usage is gonna be determined based on the number of users with active devices at the time billing is taken. That is typically done around the 22nd of the month. One of the components inside of here that we can take a look at is offline devices. So if you have a device that is offline for more than 30 days, it gets offline outside of the billing cycle, that offline device no longer counts towards usage. Even if it is attached to a user, it's been offline for more than 30 days, it will not count towards usage for that particular user. The next one we're going to take a look at is fish threat. Fish threat is going to be considered active when you have a campaign that has been deployed to at least one email address. This is going to be unique email addresses. So if we send out a campaign to 50 of our users, you're going to have a license that month for 50 fish threat licenses. You can have a second campaign going to those same 50 users. It will not incur any additional cost. Also, if the user picks up the training after the campaign is ended or in the next billing cycle, that training that they're gonna do does not count towards additional usage. You're only gonna be billed based on when the campaign is actually sent during that billing period to the unique number of email addresses. Sophos Central Email Advanced. This is gonna be based on mailboxes and shared mailboxes that have sent or received emails during that billing period. That will consider them active. There is no additional cost for any aliases, distribution lists, or public folders uh, using central email. But again, any email that transverses through this particular product during the course of that month, sent or received, will count towards usage. There is a brand new license summary under the central email reporting. Please take advantage of this. It'll show you the licensed and unlicensed mailboxes inside of your account. We have a brand new product called Portal Encryption. Built into the central email advanced is the pushed base encryption. This is a secure PDF wrapper. You have the option to go into your central admin account and turn on portal encryption. Portal encryption will be charged based on the number of emails that are sent out. So the number of mailboxes that consume encrypted emails or send out encrypted emails during the course of that given month. So if they were you had five users that sent out encrypted emails, you would have a license for five usage on that particular account. This account must have the central email advanced. So this is not a standalone product. It works in conjunction with central email advanced. All right, flipping gears, getting into the server side. Our intercept X, XDR and MTR for server licenses. These are going to be server-based licenses. A server is going to be considered active if it is online within the last 30 days. So any number of servers that you have currently online at the time of billing is going to be taken. Again, typically on the 22nd of the month, we have 50 devices that are listed as active. Those devices we count towards usage. Same concept on the endpoint we have here. If a server is offline for more than 30 days, it will not count towards usage. Coming into this central firewall reporting advanced. So central firewall reporting advanced has a few changes to it. 
First being that the extreme licensing that you have inside of the Central Partner Dashboard comes with Central Firewall Reporting Advanced for 30 days. This gives you all the features of the Central Firewall Reporting Advanced for 30 days on those firewall devices. If you have a device with standard or you have a device with extreme that needs additional storage, additional time on there, we allow you to add it in 25 gig blocks. And what we're gonna have for licensing is as you add a 25 gig block to a firewall, not to a customer account, but to a firewall, that will count towards licensing. The number of blocks during a given month that is assigned to a firewall, whether it's used or not, will count towards the blocks for that particular customer. If you want more details on this, there is a link below. I will have that link in the description of the channel as well. Please go out there and check that video. It's quick and easy and walks through the central firewall reporting. Cloud Optics is another tool that you can go in. It's our Cloud Posture Assessment Tool. This is gonna be licensed by Cloud Assets. These are Cloud Assets that have been active during the last billing period. So again, not taking a snapshot on a particular time of date, but the total number of assets that have been seen during that given month. At the bottom, we have a what is a Sophos Cloud Asset. So you can go down to that page, learn what an asset is in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Environments. This is going to be the peak usage. So if you have normally 10 devices inside of your environment and you have an auto scaling event that takes you up to 20 licenses seen in optics, at the end of that month, you will be charged for the 20 licenses of cloud optics assets. So going into the Sophos Firewall, I have this as its own section because we have a few caveats and things to talk about when it comes to high availability, as well as the MSP program with RMA and troubleshooting. First, getting into the licensing. Any firewall device or virtual firewall that has an active script subscription during the last billing period is reported any telemetry data to Sophos will count towards usage. Again, it's gonna be considered active if we see any telemetry coming back from that device during that billing period. If a firewall is offline and it has a subscription, it's offline for more than 30 days, it will not count towards usage for that particular device. This is gonna be subscriptions on the hardware firewalls. It's also gonna be a subscription on a base license virtual firewall that you have purchased. We also have our virtual firewall as a service, which is gonna be your base license, as well as a subscription, all in a monthly cost. Getting into the MSP Flex scenarios with high availability. So this comes up quite a bit. We have the ability for active passive HA. The primary subscription is shared with the passive appliance in this case. As you put a license on the device, you do not have to also license the passive appliance. You only need to license the primary appliance. This counts for hardware, and we'll talk about virtual here in just a second. In an active, active environment for high availability, you would need to license both the primary and secondary appliance. Both will be active at the same time. Both require a subscription. When we get into the virtual firewall, in the active passive, whether you're gonna do virtual firewall as a service or you're gonna purchase your base license and then have a subscription assigned to that, you only need to license the primary unit. With the virtual firewall as a service, the secondary appliance does not require a base license to be purchased. It does not require you to set up a base license for the virtual firewall as a service. Both the base license and the subscription are both shared from the primary appliance. Mm -hmm. Now in an active active solution for virtual firewall, this would need licensing on both of those firewalls. So when it comes to support and RMA, and this particularly goes around the hardware, in a normal environment, as long as that device is licensed, it will have support and RMA. When we talk about HA, we have to have at least the extreme protection or extreme protection with WAF and email on that device in order to have the passive unit covered under the RMA. You will have support from Sophos, but unless we have the extreme licensing on there, that passive license will not be covered under the RMA process. If you're running active passive with the standard license, again, you will still have the support, but no RMA for that secondary appliance. So ensure you have the extreme protection 
at minimum if you are running the active passive component. So this is a design just to be a really quick walkthrough of the license usage for Sophos Central. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local MSP team. We'd be happy to jump on a call and walk you through this and go into a deeper dive. Thanks.